October 21st, 1743, Philadelphia, 8.30 p.m. Franklin goes out expecting to see a lunar eclipse, but clouds from a nor'easter storm block his view. Several days later, he finds out that not only was the eclipse visible in Boston about the same time, but that the storm in Boston arrived after the eclipse. Since storm winds were blowing from the northeast, shouldn't the eclipse have been covered by the storm in Boston before the storm got to Philadelphia? So, from what he sees himself, and the news he gets from outside, remember, he's a postmaster and a newsman, he noticed that even when winds seemed to blow from the east, the storms came from the west. A natural cycle of air movement. Add in things like land formations, temperatures, evaporation of water from the oceans, throw them all together, and you get weather. Now here's where some people have some crazy ideas. You all know the story of Ben Franklin, the kite, and the key. Or do you? Version 1. Ben Franklin buys a nice big kite, ties a key to the end, goes out into a big field during a lightning storm, waits until his kite is struck by a bolt of lightning, observes the key glowing with electrical charge. Eureka! I have found it! Or something! And promptly drops dead, having been thoroughly stupid. Oh, phooey! Version 2. Ben Franklin, wanting to get back at the Royal Society in London for not taking his scientific writing seriously, writes about his experiment and sends it off, gleefully waiting for some other stooge to fry himself. Eh, yeah, what, what? This colonial barbarian, having sent an unscientific proposal, why, I will steal his glory by performing the experiment myself. Oh, look! Lightning! And promptly drops dead, having been thoroughly tricked. Oh, bother, I seem to be quite deceased. Version 3. Franklin writes about an experiment called the Sentry Box, where someone standing safe inside a shelter that is built onto a high tower with an iron rod on top observes what happens when charge is building outside, when the weather turns bad. He proposes that some charge be drawn off the rod with a wire held by an insulated handle. The experiment is successfully performed in May of 1752 by a Frenchman, Monsieur d'Abelard. Franklin doesn't even learn of this until after he tries it himself in June of the same year, witnessed only by his son William. Only instead of a lightning rod, an iron rod, he's got the kite, check, the key, check, but he, the key, and a silk ribbon are safely inside a shelter. When Franklin sees thread standing up on the kite string, he knows electrical charge is building as hoped, and bringing his knuckle close to the key, he receives that old familiar tingling feeling. Oh, that tickles! And promptly invents the lightning rod, which when installed safely conducts these electrical forces into the ground, sparing life, limb, and property, and becomes the most celebrated American of his time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we all live happily ever after.